Hey guys, welcome to the Logic Tutor. If you are new here, please click on the subscribe button and also on the bell beside it to notify you when we drop a new video. If you have subscribed, thanks for doing that. This is a video you have to watch to the end because it consists all the information you would need for the YEC 2021 Biology Practical Examination. So now we're going to take the specimen right from A to the last and then we talk about them and we show you their our structure in terms of label and we tell you more things about them. So let's move ahead to see uh, those specimen and we should be able to identify them as we proceed. We're going to start with the first specimen which is specimen A and that is the cervical vertebra. The cervical vertebra is found in the neck region and moreover it's seven in man and it actually for mammals or vertebrates and then for mammals for example man it is seven in number and the first cervical vertebra is called the atlas vertebra we have seven of it so but we uh, the first one is called the atlas and the second one is called the uh axis as you are seeing in the diagram so we have the atlas and the axis so then the third to the seventh ones are bones or normal bones of the cervical bones so we are going to take the characteristics of the atlas and the axis and also their functions so starting with atlas let's look at the characteristics it has a large neural canal as you can see a hole in the center of the atlas it shows that it has a, a large neural canal. Then it has a flat and broad transverse process. Then also the neural spine is very short and or absent. It is either short or absent. Then the centrum is absent. There is no centrum. It has a vertebral canal for passage of blood vessels. So those are the major characteristics of uh the atlas vertebra seeing it visually and then what is the function what actually is the function of the atlas vertebra it permits the nodding of the head as it is fit into the what occipital codi of the skull so this enables nodding of the head this is a, a particular bone that enables the nodding of the head because it is attached to the occipital condyle of the skull. So now let's take a look at axis. The characteristic is it has a broad and flat centrum. And don't forget that there is no centrum in that of a, a, a atlas rather. So but in axis we have a centrum, a broad one, a broad and flat one. So then it articulates with the atlas. That means it joins with the atlas through the odontoid process so it actually joined with the atlas through that odontoid process then uh, it has a large flattened neural spine it has a neural spine then uh, the transverse process is reduced to a pain like structure if you look at it very well it has a pain like structure so and then that is for axis and it also has a bacteria vertebrarial canal as well just like the um, atlas so and then the function it allows the head to be turned easily that means it allows twisting of the head so that is the function of atlas so and those are the two major ones we meant to discuss so why the remaining which is uh, the third to the seventh are uh, the bones the normal bones of the atlas uh, a cervical vertebra rather. So now let's move to specimen B. So in specimen B we have the thoracic vertebra and where is the thoracic vertebra located? It is located in the chest region and what are the characteristics? It has a long and prominent neural spine which projects upward and backward. That is the characteristics. Then we can still look at it very well and consider uh, the large cylindrical centrum that is also present. So, and there is a large neural canal as well and a neural arc present in it. Then it has a pair of short transverse process as well. So then what is the function? It aids the attachment of the rib. 
that is the function of toric vertebra so it's h it aid rather the attachment of the rib so looking at that you can see the structure so you can also try to make drawings of this structure so you can uh, practice for the exam then for specimen c we have um, the lumbar vertebra it is located in the upper abdominal region they are five in number in man so and what are the characteristics it has a large flattened, flattened transverse process it has a broad and flat neural spine just like the axis it has a large and thick centrum it has two extra paired projection they call those two extra paired projection they call it anapophosis and metapophosis and these are for the attachment of abdominal muscles so then what is the function it provides attachment for abdominal muscle just because of the presence of these two extra extra paired projections and secondly the function they bear considerable weight of the body so it helps let's say it so it supports the weight of the body it bears the considerable weight the highest weight or let's say the highest percentage of the body weight it bears that so uh for specimen d i'm gonna um mention specimen d e f and g all together because we have a lot to discuss about them so let us consider a bean plant a bean plant or let's consider having a beaker let's say four different beaker of which they are labeled d e f and g that is four d e f and g and this four beaker consists of uh, garden soil and let's say specimen d consists of garden soil which is moistened with water and then we have uh, a complete bean plant sorry a bean bean seed rather dropped into heat so then what will be the response if uh, the bean is placed under a condition of uh, certain temperature which is above uh, 60 degree fahrenheit and then in the presence of sunlight will it germinate will it germinate actually so that is for bean plants in soil in uh, moist soil that specimen d and moreover we need also to talk about the bean plant and bean seed itself if you look at the bean seed it consists of the coats the body coats we have uh, also the embryo we have the cotyledon though it's a leguminous plant so it has a cotyledon and all that you know definitely the uh, embryo present in it is also responsible for germinating of the seed so but let us consider placing it in a beaker where we have a garden soil and a wet garden soil that means moistened garden soil that means it's placed in water that means water is added to the soil in the beaker and then we drop the bean without removing anything from it so we are peeling out anything from it so we put it there so let us consider the germination of such seed and that is for specimen d and then we need also to talk about the number of days it takes to germinate if truly it's going to germinate so that depends on your research so then it takes about seven to ten days if it meet up to the condition of temperature light and the resources required like water so it takes about seven to ten days for it to germinate and what is the name for beans you might be asked the name of the plant it is called Phaseolus vulgaris L. I will repeat again Phaseolus vulgaris L. So, and then uh, for specimen E, let us consider uh, getting the bean soaked in water. Let, let us consider getting it soaked in water and then thereafter we remove the tester on the bean then we we you know we divide it into two you know like a, a kidney shape to uh part and then the embryo is being removed i think you know what the embryo is all about so the as you are seeing in the diagram you should be able to see that so the embryo is being removed and then the cotyledon only the cotyledon 
is put into a beaker containing a moist garden soil so will it germinate so that is another question for you to make research and then you should know the condition for the seed of uh, the bean seed to germinate and what would happen if only the cotyledon the splitted cotyledon is what is planted and moreover uh, don't forget that it is soaked before i mean the cotyledon is already soaked before it is dropped into the what into the soil in the beaker so and then we need to study one or two things about this the soaking how does it speed up the germination of the seed so that is for specimen e for specimen f let us consider using that bean ship a bean seed rather let's put it in the moist soil just like just like specimen d that we have done but in this case we are adding enough kerosene which is enough to cover the surface of the uh, the soil so which means we have put the bean into another condition so let us consider the germination or the growth of that bean seed in such situation so unlike d specimen d you know uh, we just place the bean in the moist soil and that's all but for specimen f for specimen f now it means the bean is placed in the moist soil and then kerosene is added so in that case is it going to germinate and what are the uh, effects what is the effect of kerosene on its germination of the seed so that is for specimen f then for specimen g let us consider putting you know we have been talking about bean seed being placed in a wet garden soil and then wet garden soil with kerosene and then splitted uh cotyledon soaked in water put in uh, wet garden soil that is for specimen e and specimen f is the one of kerosene why specimen d is the one of wet garden soil alone pure so then what of if the bean seed is placed in the soil which is dry not wet so what will be the response dry soil so most especially let's put it this way a soil the soil that is not sun dry that is maybe dry by oven or a series of process or making use of dryer so what do you think we happen to that kind of uh, seed will it germinate so this specimen d e f and g we need to research on all these certain things in preparation for the exam then let's move to specimen j specimen j is called allium sepa and that is onions allium sepa actually onion is a biennial crop is a biennial plant rather and they are they have a leaf the leaf is always yellowish or let's say bluish green yellowish to blue, bluish green leaves that is what they have and they have fleshy olu and cylindrical they are fleshy olu and cylindrical with one flattened side so that is the the physical properties of onions which is allium sepa and moreover when you when you are right when you are told to write the botanical name you write the first genus name with starting with capital letter and the rest should be in small letter why the species name should be in small letter and you should underline with pencil so then the function it contains some antibacterial antibacterial uh, uh, substances so which make it have an anti antibacterial properties and it also promotes digestive health and you know it is used for you know it is edible it is edible as we use it in cooking and all that so then we have specimen k which is green grass a lot to be talking about to, to talk about rather on green grasses and um, you know they contain chlorophyll and they are autotrophs which means they manufacture their foods alone i mean 
independently but they depend directly on sunlight carbon dioxide water in the process called photosynthesis for them to grow and they manufacture their foods and normally apart from the producer they form the major uh base uh, let's say the basis of every ecology ecological uh system because um actually in the food chain directly or indirectly all primary uh, sorry secondary and tertiary consumers depends on the primary producers the primary producers so and green grasses are some are one of the primary producers let's take for instance when goats feed on grasses and man feed on goats so and then man might not feed on grass directly so and that is indirectly we have feed on grasses so they form the basis and they form uh the basis of every eco, eco ecological system or eco, uh, ecosystem rather so now that is for that so then let's move to specimen l that is adult mosquito and adult mosquito we have types of it we have the anopheles and we have the aedes mosquito then the anopheles is popularly known for the uh spreading or let's say as a vector of uh malaria malaria parasite which is called uh, plasmodium falciparum and we have also plasmodium viva so and then they have their life cycle which is just one week so they grow and mature within one week so and they complete they have a complete metamorphosis and the larva we have the the larva feeds you know i can i think they are found in stagnant water where they where they survive before they grow into adults and moreover um when you talk about the transmission of uh diseases the transmission of diseases which means they are the vector for a particular parasite which causes malaria and this is just a, sp a spontaneous process because uh mosquito itself do not have the intention to pass across the disease or uh, the infection rather this is how it occurs uh the saliva of a mosquito consists of an anticoagulant so which prevents blood from clotting and moreover when they suck you know they are piercing and sucking insects so when they suck the blood from uh the the host or whatsoever let's say they suck the blood from the food source and they try to release their saliva to ensure that the blood does include and in this process they have introduced what we call sporozoite into the uh, blood and the process continues where we have the erythrocytic stage and pre erythrocytic stage in the body of the host or the food source so and then that is how there is development of malaria in the body so and that is for mosquito so for specimen m we have the butterfly butterfly belongs to the order called lepidoptera and the name is uh, ropalocera so that is the name then what are the characteristics let's talk about the features the, the physical features we can see in butterfly we have uh, you know they have characteristic color yeah they have a particular color which is some mostly yellow in most case and moreover they taste with their feet they taste with their feet and however they are also piercing and sucking insects which means when they get to plants they suck the nectar from plants or uh, they suck uh, the nutrients from plants and then they taste that through their feet and then oh, they are also responsible for the transfer of pollen grains so which means there are some plants or, or fruits that wouldn't exist if butterfly doesn't exist so they have a particular function in terms of transferring of pollen grains so then they 
are various color depending on the species type we have various species of butterfly actually there are various species of butterfly actually so and um, this the this uh enables the variation in colors it enables the variation in colors or type of uh, butterfly colors we do find and they also undergo metamorphosis just like some other uh, insects so then for specimen a which is sugar ant the name for sugar ant is Campo camponotus consobrinus camponotus consobrinus and it belongs to the order of amenoptera amenoptera then the life cycle it started with the egg then we have the larva then the pupa the adult so that is a complete metamorphosis for insects for the uh, uh, sugar ants and you know that they suck nectar from plants you can see them along in, in plants also flowering plants they suck the nectar and they are always familiar with we we are always familiar with seeing them in sugar in the places where we have sugar that is their major source of food so that is for plants uh, sugar ants rather and then moreover they have what's it called they have their egg, head region we have their abdominal region then the thorax just like every other insect they have the body divisions in that way and, and just like the butterfly they helps in transfer of pollen grains not every time actually so that is all about the specimen for the YEC 2021 biology practical. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's free. Thank you.